Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic, and in this video I will show you how to use Refit to consume REST APIs in C#. The Refit library for C# provides us with the type safe wrapper for interacting with HTTP-based APIs instead of using HTTP client, which is provided for us by ASP.NET Core. We can define an interface that represents the API we want to interact with. With this interface, we define the endpoints get, post, put, delete our API contains along with any route or body parameters. Also, we can include headers in the interface, such as ones for authorization. In this video, I will show you how to do all of that. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps channel a lot and supports my work as well here. That said, let's move on with the video. Refit provides us with two ways to instantiate a client, either by using the REST service class provided by Refit like this, you see, I use the REST service class and call the for method that generates a refit implementation for the provided interface. Then I can simply use the client and all the methods from the registered interface to send the different HTTP requests. But there is another way by registering the refit client with HTTP client factory and injecting the interface into a class constructor. Both are valid ways to register and use the refit client. However, if we want to make our code more maintainable and testable, registering the client with HTTP client factory and injecting it into the required class constructors is the way to go. This allows us to easily inject a mock of the interface for testing purposes, without having to rely on any of the implementation details of either HTTP client or the refit library. That said, I will use the second implementation in this video. Now, Instead of setting up a new API from scratch, I will use JSON placeholder. It's a free, fake API that can be used for testing and fits our needs perfectly. It provides various resources to interact with, but for this video, I'll use the user's resource. Now, just quickly, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful, production-ready web APIs. Also, Check out our Blazor course to create client C-sharp apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. Ok, with our API service selected, you can see I already have the console application created that I will use to implement refit and consume different endpoints. We must also add the refit library from Nugget. As we will be using the HTTP client factor registration method, we need to add two packages. Also, since I am using a console application here, I have the hosting package installed as well to be able to access the host class to configure my services. Now, I already have the user model created and with that done, I can modify the iUser client interface. Since the API will return us a list of users, I will create a member that returns a task i enumerable of users and let's name it get all. Then, to turn this interface into a refit client, I will add the get attribute to the get all method and define the route as users. That's all I have to do to define a refit member. Now, I can open the program class and you can see some initial code prepared to register services for this console application. And here, I will use the services parameter and call the add refit client method that accepts my iUser client interface as a generic type parameter. With this method, I am adding refit to the dependency injection container. Also, I will call the configure HTTP client method to add some configuration for the client and I will simply set the base address property to a new URI where I will provide the base URI of my API server. Finally, I will create a user's client variable and use the host.services property and the get required service method to fetch the iUser's client service from the service collection. The same thing we would do in a constructor injection if, for example, we were using a web API instead. With our service registration complete, I can retrieve some users. So, all I have to do is create a user's variable and then use the client to call the getAll method 
I defined in the iUsers client interface. Also, I will simply print all the users to see the result. This demonstrates how simple it is to use a refit client to abstract HTTP calls. We make a method call that returns our populated user model. Now, let's run the app. And you can see some logs from refit and then our 10 users. Awesome. Next, let's explore some of the further capabilities of refit by adding more methods to iUsers client. Firstly, I add the getUser method, which takes an ID parameter to identify the user I want to retrieve. I have to decorate this method with the get attribute, and in the route, I define a dynamic parameter. Next up is the createUser method, which takes a user as a parameter, and because I want this to be passed as the HTTP request body, I decorate the parameter with the body attribute. This time, it's a post request that the API expects. To update a user, I need the put method, combining both a route parameter, ID, and body content, which is the user I want to update. Finally, to delete a user, I make a delete request, providing the ID of the user to delete. So, as you can see, following the same pattern, I create the interface members that I can use to send all the requests. Nothing more is needed here. That said, let's get back to the program class. Here, I will create a new user and populate the name with John Doe and email with John Doe at test.com. Now, I will create a created user variable and as before, I will use the client and this time call the createUser method and pass my new user as an argument. Again, this is all I have to do here. Also, I will simply print the message as proof that I created a new user. Now, since all the other requests are following the same pattern, I will simply paste the rest of the code here. You see, I extract a single user, modify their email, then update that user, and finally, I delete my previously created user. Pretty simple, isn't it? Again, let's run the app. And within all these logs, we can see that I retrieved 10 users. Then you can see the user is created with ID 11. You can also see the email is updated for the user with ID 1. And finally, the created user is deleted. Now, as I said, I will show you how to use authorization verified. But since this testing API doesn't support authorization requests, I will use my API project, which I used in my previous video for the HTTP client authorization. If you want to watch that one and see how you can authorize an HTTP client request, feel free to watch that video. As usual, it will be linked in the description below. So, with the project attached here, I will create a new interface named iAuthClient. Here, I will create a new member that returns the task access token result and I will name it login user. Also, it will accept a single body parameter of the authenticate model type named user. Of course, I have to decorate this one with the post attribute and provide the route. That's all I need to do here. Now, as I did before, I have to register this interface with refit. So let's use the services parameter and call the add refit client method with my new interface as a generic type parameter. And then let's add a configuration here and set the base address with a new URI that points to my local API project. Also, I need to fetch this service from the container. And for that, I can copy and paste this line and change the name to auth client and change the interface parameter to iauth client. Great. With all this prepared, I have a way to obtain a JSON web token from my API. So let's see how to do that. First, let's create a result and then use the auth client to call the login user method 
and provide a new authenticate model as an argument where I will populate the email and the password properties. This should return an access token object and I will simply place the token inside the cache service. This is just for the example purpose, but you see the point here. You would probably have the token placed in a real cache service or a storage. Now, if we have only a few requests in our app that need an authorization header, we can specify that for only those specific requests. For example, in the iUser client interface, let's assume only the get all request must be authorized. So, all I have to do here is to use the authorize attribute with the bearer parameter. And as you can see, the scheme is bare by default. So, if you want, you can also omit this string. But you have to provide a token parameter. Then, in the program class, I need to provide the token as an argument. And that's all. Now, let me hide all of the other requests and modify the base URI of the user's client to my local API's URI. Okay, now let's run both apps. And you can see three users returned. Of course, I will show you that the get users endpoint requires authorization. So, this works great. On the other hand, and this is the most usual case, we have a lot more requests that need to be authorized and not just a single one. For that, I can use a delegating handler, the same way I used in my previously mentioned video about HTTP client authorization. So, let's create a new class, name it auth handler, and I will simply paste the code here. There is nothing new here, and all of this is already explained in my linked video. With this, I will intercept every request for the specific registered client and attach the barrier authentication header with the provided token. Now, in the program class, I have to attach this handler to the refit service registration using the add HTTP message handler method and providing the handler class as a generic type parameter. And I need to register this auth handler as a transient service here. Finally, let's remove the authorize attribute from the get all method and also remove the argument in the program class. Ok, let's run the apps again and you can see the same result. So, the authorization works. Awesome! In this video, you've learned how we can abstract interaction with HTTP based APIs by using refit and creating a simple interface for our API. This allowed us to avoid dealing with complex HTTP logic, such as creating request messages and deserializing responses, and instead focus on the core logic relating to our applications. That said, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.